In a new document of any size, make sure the fill color is set to black and no stroke is set. The first thing we're going to do is select the ellipse tool from the toolbar on the right hand side and draw out a small ellipse. In the properties panel on the right hand side, input 133 pixels for the width and 125 for the height. This is pretty small, so let's zoom in. Select the rectangle tool and draw out a shape. In the properties panel, input 90 by 73 pixels for the size. Align the, the rectangle's top edge to the center of the ellipse. You will see the word center or intersect appear when properly aligned. While holding down the Alt key, click and drag a copy of the rectangle. Set the size to be 61 by 57 pixels and align the top edge to the center of the rectangle above. Now click and drag over all the shapes. Go to the Align tab in the top right hand corner and under Align Objects select Horizontal Align Center. Go down to the Pathfinder tab at the bottom and click Unite. From the toolbar, select the rectangle tool and draw a shape. Make sure you're using the direct selection tool by pressing A on the keyboard and then click and drag over the left hand side anchor points. In the properties panel, you will see the option to convert anchor points. Select the smooth option. This will round the points. With the rectangle still selected, set the width and height to be 42 by 31 pixels. Hit V on the keyboard to switch to the selection tool and hover around the corner for the rotate option to appear. Click and rotate the rectangle about 30 degrees. Place the rectangle inside the skull shape. We're looking for the guideline to show that the rectangle edge is aligned with the ellipse. Once that appears and the rectangle is in place, hold down the Alt key and click and drag a copy of the rectangle over. Holding Shift will keep the copy in line with the original shape. Now in the Properties panel, click on the Flip Horizontally button. Align this rectangle the same as before, waiting for the Smart Guideline to appear. With it selected, hold Shift and click on the other rectangle. Hit Ctrl G to group them together. Still holding Shift, click on the skull shape to have them both selected. And in the Align tab, click on Center. In the Pathfinder tab, click on Unite. Hit A on the keyboard to make sure you're using the Direct Selection tool. Click and drag over the two anchor points that connect the skull to the cheekbones. You will know they are selected by the two circles on the outside of the shape. Click on the circle and drag it out to round both corners at the same time. Hit the minus key to switch over to the delete anchor point tool and click on the anchor points below the cheekbones to have them deleted. Click and drag over the bottom anchor point of one side, then hold down shift and select the anchor point on the other. Drag both these down all the way. For rounding the bottom, click and drag over the two anchor points. Hold Shift plus C to switch to the anchor point tool. Wait for the word path to appear to know that it's selected. Click then hold down Shift to cause the path to be curved equally from both anchor points and drag it down. To create the teeth, go to the rectangle tool and draw out a small rectangle that will be three pixels wide. Hit the Alt key to duplicate the rectangle and drag it over 11 pixels. Now hit Ctrl D three times to duplicate the rectangle the exact same distance. Click and drag over all the rectangles and hit Ctrl G to group them together. Bring them up to the curve line and once in a good place, we'll hold Shift and select the skull with our rectangles. Center both with the Align Center button in the Align tab. Then in the Pathfinder tab, click on minus front to cut out the shapes. Now zoom way in, and what we want to do here is select all the top anchor points of these three teeth. Click over all the anchor points, hold Shift, and click on any anchor points that you missed on your first try. Now we're going to bring down the tops of these three steps to create that rounded effect. The 
with the rectangle tool, draw out a small rectangle and set the size to be 33 by 28 pixels. Zoom in and with the direct selection tool, click and drag over the left side anchor points and convert them to smooth within the properties panel. Do the same with the right. Hit A to ensure you have the direct select tool active. Starting from the top left, bring that down one. You will see the DX value change to one. These adjustments can be a bit finicky, so play around until you have the correct matching DX and DY values shown. The bottom left will get moved over one and up two steps. The bottom right will move over one and up six. The top right will move one over and three down. Now change the fill color and zoom out. Align the eye somewhat with the top of the cheek. Hold all and click to drag copy to the other side. Hit flip horizontally in the properties panel. Hold shift to select both eyes. Hit Ctrl G to group them together. Then click on the skull. In the Align tab, go to Center, go to the Pathfinder tab, and select Minus Front. The final shape we need to create to finish this goal will be the triangle for the nose. Click on the Shapes icon. In the Toolbar panel, select the Polygon tool. When drawing out the polygon, hold Shift to make sure that it draws out straight. In the Properties panel, click on the three dots in the corner to extend down the menu. Right below that, you will see the polygon side count slider. Change that to three sides. Change the size of the triangle to be 28 by 36 pixels. Zoom in and hit the plus key on the keyboard to switch to the add anchor point tool. Move the cursor to the bottom of the triangle and when you see the guideline appear, click to add the anchor point to the middle. With the direct select tool, click and drag over that anchor point and drag it up 8 pixels. Now click and drag over the entire triangle to round all the corners at once. Drag in one of the circles until about 3 pixels. Change to any color and place the triangle around the center of the skull. Align the bottom of it somewhat to the bottom of the cheek. Once in place, hold shift and click on the skull. Click in the Align tab and click on Center. Then in the Pathfinder tab, click on Minus Front. With the skull now done, let's move on to the crossbones. Go to the toolbar and select the Rectangle tool and draw a shape. Set the rectangle size to be 165 by 20 pixels. Zoom in and create another smaller rectangle. With the direct select tool, draw over the right two anchors and convert them to smooth. Set the size to be 18 by 18 pixels. Switch to the selection tool by pressing V and rotate the square about 30 degrees. Line up the corner of the square to the edge of the rectangle. Hold down Alt and click and drag down a copy of the square. In the Properties panel, click on Flip Vertically. 
hold down Shift and Alt together to shrink down the rectangle to about 16 pixels. Hold Shift and click on both squares and then click on Merge in the Pathfinder tab. Make sure you only have one anchor point selected. I had the whole shape selected by mistake and rounded all the corners. Hitting Ctrl Z will undo that mistake. Click on the shape and hold Alt to create a copy to drag over to the other end. Press flip vertically in the properties panel and align it up with the edge of the rectangle. Select all three shapes and in the Pathfinder tab click on Merge. Now rotate the bow in about 20 degrees. Control C to copy it and then Control Shift V to place it exactly on top of the current bone. Go to the properties panel and click on flip vertically. Select both bones and click on merge in the Pathfinder tool. Line up the cross bones under the scroll using the smart guideline and now our graphic is complete. Thanks for watching and please remember to like and subscribe if you found this helpful.